side. Now, watching us is a bit like Razor scratching his balls. It's a dirty habit, but you just can't help yourself. <laughs> Can you? Can you, Lionel? Yeah. Uh, right, OK, now, just because it's a penultimate show, that doesn't mean that we're going to stop giving you exclusives. Would you like another? Oh, yes! Yeah. Do you think your tactics have the winning formula? From the beginning, all the interviews coming into the house, um, the testimonial they had us do the two days before the house, every time we discussed what we were going to do in the house, we've stayed true to the plan. We let the public know what we were going to do. We were going to come in here, try to be the most hated, try to be the villains, try to make the housemates hate us so much that they wanted to all leave quit and uh, I think that is the most entertaining approach to uh, this game is to make everyone want to quit because they can't hate you. I said of course but we're Spidey and I'm the sp so it's the first part so. <laughs> That's the only part you yeah, It's sp Heidi. okay. Um, so I think yes I think our formula done executed the way we have is the winning formula because it provided the most conflict, the most entertainment, and if everyone else did the little butt kissing formula, and if we had joined in there, it would just everybody circle in a big butt kiss circle, and it's just would like. Would have been so <sighs> boring. And it wouldn't have been a game, it's supposed to be boring. a game. Boring. They've done it again. I don't get what's going on with them again. They confuse me. Uh, maybe this lady can help me. Uh, now, it's the last night in the house and here to help us decipher what our celebs are really going to be thinking in the final 24 hours and what the hell that was all about is everybody's favourite body language expert, the lovely Judy James. <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore. No, just do what they do. Um, they? <laughs> uh, last night, the housemates, um, they seemed shocked yes. that Frankie was the first person to be leaving the house. Uh, let's just take a look at, at their reaction when he left. Frankie. Yes! Oh! Frankie! You're joking. Frankie, oh! you've lost your place inside the celebrity joking, Big Brother man. house. What? You've got Sorry. 30 seconds to say your goodbyes. OK, so, Judy, what are their reactions telling us? Uh, Trisha, I think Trisha, Claire and Spencer will go yeah. to, but let's start with the girls. Trisha and Claire, I mean, obviously shocked, but I think the problem was that Frankie had kind of played the game in there in a very similar way to the way that they've been playing it, which is that um, be fun, be upbeat, don't get into conflict. So I think they took it especially personally that this guy had gone. Um, but differently, if you look at their body language, now Trisha, her mouth's gone into a square shape and she's actually, <laughs> she's actually frowning. Um, and I think there was a degree of anger, either anger because her friend had been chucked out or because it, the other two hadn't gone. Is it weird talking about Trisha's body language when she's sat over I'm there? I'm pretending she's not there, actually. <laughs> I can't see her, so I can't see her reaction. But I hope she's nodding. Um, I'm glad Spidey aren't there. Um, <laughs> If you look at Claire, though, now her mouth went into a perfect O. Her brows are raised and she's got this kind of defensive hand that's come up. That's actually more to do with fear. Um, that's more to do with the fact that if he's gone, then I must be vulnerable as well. That's the sort of surprise and fear. So, so I that's think... the worry that she might go next, yeah, you think? Yeah, I think she suddenly felt very vulnerable. But if you look, I mean, who mirrored her was Spencer. And that was really interesting because he's got the wide mouth as well. He's doing this kind of Vic Reeves leg rub, which I'm not too sure what that maybe means. But, um, he quite <laughs> likes it, maybe. But, um, yeah, he, he was very shocked as well. I think despite his Machiavellian cunning, I think he expected to go last night. So. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so the bravado... Just slipped slightly. Ah, for a and you saw it. I was there, Hopefully just like that. Just there. <laughs> uh, now, something that stood out to us in uh, tonight's show was what Claire said in the diary room. Let, let's take a quick look. I am gutted. Trisha is the one person that was the, the closest to me. This did seem wrong because we know her as being very yes, close to Ryland. I think that's why it stood out. And Trisha was so close <laughs> to Gillian as well. Um, but if you look at her body language when she said it, she holds her hand up in a measuring gesture. And I think what she means, she says close, but I think in a way, subliminally, she means that they were close as in quite similar. 
And again, right. it, it goes back to the fact of, you know, this is somebody who's very similar to me. Uh, am I next on the list? So that's her worry again about being part of that group. And I maybe think so, being, yeah. Maybe yeah. being next. Uh, Claire is the only girl left in the house that isn't part of a couple. I know, I know Heidi's still in there, but they are kind of as one. She's on her own, the only girl in that respect. So will her role change, do you think? I think it's kind of evolving anyway. I mean, as the other women have gone, she's taken a much more dominant role. Um, she's always been a bit mother of the house, but she's been more active. I don't know if you saw when Rylan took those stones. She really told him off like a mother, didn't she? And very, very dominant as well. She's he didn't also... put him back, though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> he pretended they were in that big coat, going, oh, oh, and then he dropped them and just ruffled some stones underneath. Perhaps he's going to lob them on eviction night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder at who. Um, yeah, I, I think as well she's got the Ryland effect because yeah, he's a really funny guy. And because he's such a fan of hers, he's kind of joined her in with all those little double act set pieces that, that make her seem very amusing, probably more amusing than she would be normally. So I think she's blossoming in a way, um, definitely going into the house mother. And when she was doing the thing with the penis straw, you know, I mean, she had all the guys standing around. She was very dominant, very in the centre of the action where we haven't seen her before. Whose body, ling body language? Uh, body language <laughs> um, has given the most away for you this series? Um, Razor's very congruent. I mean, what you see is what you get with Razor. So he reacts often like a big kid, but it, it's very believable. Right. Um, um, I have to say that, and I hate to say it, but, you know, the Pratts have actually been very giving as well. Because there's an interesting thing with humans, which is that we like to believe that we're a good judge of character. It's part of our intrinsic survival response. If we're not, then people can maybe attack us and we're not expecting it. So we, I, I really feel for people, particularly the housemates, because you could not judge those two. No. They would flip from nice to wicked. And I think for the viewers as well, I think, you know, we've been conned along with the housemates as well. And I love looking at that. It's been absolutely... I've never seen it before. Absolutely We're all still quite baffled as well, aren't we? Well, we are. And I, it, it, the trouble is we then want to believe the good stuff. And I know people yeah, don't totally. like them, but you think... I don't want them to be... I want them to be a pantomime villain that's kind of winking at me and saying, no, actually, we're really quite nice. I desperately, desperately have always wanted this, but any villains that have been in the house, I've always wanted one of them to come out and go... It wasn't real. It yeah. was just an act, really and, nice and, and I, I would like that to happen. Well, we feel less me. threatened then. But I, I have to say that for me, what underpins their behaviour, and boy, have I studied it trying to work it out. Um, I know they like to make out that they're planning it, that they're Machiavellian, that they're working the house. I think they're mainly prompted by personal fear. She's very, very, very possessive of him, and that's been the only honest moments I've seen. When she follows him around, she stands there outside the toilet, she gets upset when he's got to get near another woman. Um, and I think that means that she wants them isolated, just the two of them together. And to achieve that, they have to upset everybody else. And then she's got him where she wants him. Then once they get there... So she they doesn't kind of, want to share him? She, uh, not an atom of him does she want to share. She's so, so paranoid, that I think, that, you know, he's going to look at somebody else or leave her. But then when they get to that position, she feels comfortable again. <laughs> then they start socialising again. But then somebody like Trisha will come along, give them a big hug, and then they have to start getting angry again so that they can get back into their little... To protect themselves yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not as in we should feel sorry for them, yeah. but I don't think they're crafty or cunning. I think it's driven by a cover-up for the fear that she feels that she's going to lose him. OK, um, now tomorrow I'll get my chance to interview the finalists when they come on the show, which I'm very excited about. Uh, what tell telltale body language signs should I be looking for uh, I want them? I want you to wear a head cam so I can see them. <laughs> um, look for the bravado, look for the, oh, you know, I was really happy to... They all want to win, so anybody that says they didn't, uh, that will be incongruent. But... Please, when you get... I mean, uh, listen, I will sponsor this one because I want to see just something dropped in between them. Please flirt with Spencer. <gasps> Please. <laughs> Like scientific experiment. Scientific. Yeah, right. Uh, on my head bit. Uh, and finally, Judy, thank you so much. We love having you here every series. Will you please you. come back in the summer? I, I'm not going to... Just throw a dash over me. I'll okay. be here. Brilliant. <laughs> Judy James, everybody. Right, that's all we can squeeze into this part, unfortunately. Join me after the break when I will be becoming Big Brother. We'll catch you in a moment. <laughs>